And there we are. Hello everyone. My name is Surtur from Slytherin and on behalf of the entire Slytherin group I welcome you all to our weekly Twitch stream. And today we'll be having a look at Pike and Shot campaigns. Hello Beji Jansen, glad you could join us. And um, Pike and Shot campaigns is the new uh, title in the Pike and Shot series. Uh, you might be familiar with them. It's all about the age of Pike and Shot. So we got muskets, we got pikes, and it's a turn-based strategy game. And one of the awesome things Pike and Shot campaigns does, as it says in the title, it adds a campaign layer uh, to the series. So that was one of the things that was requested a lot in the previous series, and the developer of Byzantine Games was more than happy to provide this for you. So this game has yet to be released, so if you click on the banner uh, below the stream, you'll get more information instantly. Hello everyone, welcome to all the newcomers here. Uh, Ansbach, glad you could join us, and Alexios as well. Um, so if you click on the banner below this stream, it will take you to the product page, and you can get some more information on that. Um, Pike and Shot will be standalone, um, for those who didn't know that, so you don't need to own any of the previous games uh, in order to get this one. Uh, so it's a standalone title completely, but if you own some of the previous games, or if you own previous P Pike and Shot, you will be able to get a nice discount, um, and more details on that later as we approach release. So yeah, everything you will see here is pre-release, but we feel confident enough to uh, give you a bit of a sneak peek, as it were. So here we are in the main menu of Pike and Shot campaigns, and what I'm going to show you specifically is the campaign layer, as that's the main new feature of this game. So we can see the new button over here say, saying campaigns, and by clicking on it, uh, please let me know if the sound balance and stuff is okay. Um, if there's any issue, I will make an adjustment. Just let me know in the chat. Also, should you have any questions on the game, please let me know in the chat and I'll try and answer them uh, to the best of my abilities. So here we have the campaign list and we can choose like the Pike and Shot campaign, which is a bit like um, uh, a campaign you can tweak yourself. And there are three more uh, or semi-historical campaigns where you play on an actual part of Europe. Um, and uh, there are three coming into the game uh, on release. It's just the Gustavus Adolphus campaign. So we got the uh, 1632, 30 Years War. Uh, we got the English Civil War and we got the Great Turkish War. So we got three distinctive campaigns taking part at, at different places uh, of Europe and they each have their own look and feel. And in addition, you can get like uh, one of these campaigns where you can set it up yourself. And let me just quickly show you how this would be done. So you hit select. Um, here you get some information on the different wars you can choose from. And this will actually um, allow you to, to customize your campaign. So you can choose the side, you can specifically choose the different army lists, whereas from the other campaigns the army lists are selected in advance. Um, hello Shenwick, glad, you can, uh, glad to have you here. Uh, so you can set your own army list, uh, different years, different opponents. Uh, whereas for the other campaigns you'll have like the pre-selected army list, obviously, because they replicate specific wars or conflicts. Um, so you get filter on or off, um, and then it will um, generate a uh, non-historical uh, piece of land where you can have these um, hypothetical uh, campaigns taking place. So th you can do this, this adds a lot of replayability as you can set up your own army list etc. Um, we're not going to do this for now though, we're going to proceed here because we're going to do one of the historical campaigns and uh, specifically we're going to look at, uh, quickly at the English Civil War campaign and then I'm going to take you through how this campaign works and how it actually adds all these battles together. Um, the focus in Pike and Shot still very much are the battles, uh, so the campaign layer is something to link these battles to attach these battles to each other, so there's carryover of losses, etc. Uh, but the campaign is not a game in itself, so it's very much helping you make sense of the randomly generated battles. Um, and that was something, again, that was requested lots and lots. So we can choose which side we want to play on. In this case, I don't want to play on the Royalist side, so we're going to select the other side for now. And uh, we're going to have the automatic forces set up, which means that the armies are generated uh, automatically, uh, the starting armies, that is. You will be able to recruit new armies later on. Um, you can also do it manually. In this case, um, at the start of the campaign, you have to recruit all your, um, your starting armies yourself. It gives you more f uh, flexibility, more freedom. Uh, automatic is a bit quicker to go. So we're going to turn off these messages for now. Uh, 
so I won't get interrupted too much. So this is the map we will be playing on, and each flag represents an army, and I can get more information on an army by hovering my mouse over it. So you get like the the fourth army here it has six action points, consists of about 1,500 foot soldiers, about 600 horses, and is worth 230 points. Now the points are a rough indication of supply use uh, and a rough indication of the strength of the army as well. I can get more information on my army by right clicking on it and that will take me to the army list and this will show you exactly what type of units my army is based on. So I got two pike and shot units, I got uh, two horse units, uh, got some heavy armored horses and I have some clubmen or poorly armed local levies. And I can see different information for all these armies. So the interface is fairly easy, fairly straightforward. You'll be able to jump in quickly. Um, we can see that the uh, the blue territories are enemy territories. Um, these are our territories, and we can just drag and drop our flags onto the enemies. So what I'm going to do now, for example, I'm going to take this army over here, which consists of uh, six pike and shot units, five horses, some medium guns, some dragoons, which are very nice, and some reserve pike and shot. Uh, the difference between these pike and shot and the reserve one, as you can see at the uh, at the tooltip, is these are raw and nervous troops. So these are weaker troops generally, um, but they might get experience throughout the campaign. So I'm going to take this army and I'm going to move it to the army over here and that will cost me two ac uh, two action points as you can see from the tooltip. So the tooltip tells you, and that depends on the type of terrain the region has, how many action points it takes to move. So I'm going to move them here and I'm going to combine these armies together. So the campaign is fully turn based. Um, so I move, then my enemy moves and if a battle is generated, I, uh, or if a if two armies meet in the same region, a battle will be generated using pretty much like the skirmish generator, uh, which also means that adds a lot of freedom and flexibility uh, to it. And the skirmish generator, already standalone, is of course still available in this game as, as well as all the previous content of the other Pike and Shot games. Um, so this is the, the, the complete package really. So now I still have some action points left, three, and to move into this region, the West Midlands, it costs two action points. So I'm going to try and challenge the Royalist First Army over here, which is a pretty decent army, but I should outmatch them. It's going to hit the enemy, uh, select the uh, other region, and we can see that the Royalist Army actually retreated. Uh, they figured they weren't strong enough, so they automatically retreated from battle. The AI will do this for you as well. Um, Indicating that usually armies don't want to fight a much um, a much stronger army. It's better to preserve your manpower and retreat. So having done that, um, so we are now actually besieging, uh, going to besiege this specific region. And over here we got some strong enemy armies, 800 points worth, uh, and 500 points worth. This one's fairly weak. Um, this we got 200 and 500 so I'm inclined to actually merge these together let's combine these and have two stronger armies rather than divided weaker ones that could be gobbled up individually so having done that I'm gonna end my turn um, usually there's other stuff of course during a turn you can do you can recruit new new uh, troops but as we can see here our treasury is empty um, and as we go through the campaign I'll tell you uh, a bit more uh, on the economy model that's in. It's all fairly simple, simple, fairly straightforward, and it's all made to have battles appear um, wherever possible and to give you interesting battles to fight. So we can see that the enemy, during their turn, they moved south, um, trying to uh, go into some of my regions. We got a message log over here saying what actually is all happening. Um, so we can continue, could choose if we want to engage the enemy or continue to do what we're doing at the moment. Here, for example, there's a fairly good chance we can uh, capture this province from them. And capturing the province gives you a tax, it uh, gives you supply, um, a higher supply limit within the region. Um, so here, for example, we can see if you select every, any region you want, you can see to the right, you can see some uh, specific data on the unit. So the available manpower the supply limit, um, so the amount of troops in the region can carry basically uh, without suffering uh, some penalties, and the tax value. And the tax value, you get taxes once uh, every year, and then you'll be able to recruit new armies. 
So I'm going to keep this army over here, let it besiege, and I'm going to use this army probably to try and chase these guys out. So I'm going to use my second army to engage their second army and see uh, where they will flee to. And they're fleeing to York, so I'm thinking of chasing them into York. And here they are going to battle. And the reason why they're not fleeing me now is because in York there's a good chance they'll have some local levies supporting them. So here we can see that local forces have joined their army. So even though I might have been stronger now, um, with their the help of their local units, um, they might actually just overpower me. So now I'm going to jump into a battle. Um, the smaller battles you can auto-resolve, the bigger battles you have to do yourself. Uh, this one's considered reasonably big, and so we're going to have to do it ourselves. So we're going to hit start battle. And to those of us just joining us now, I see we got a couple of new viewers in. Uh, we're playing Pike and Shot Campaigns, a game that's coming out fairly soon, which is the next generation of Pike and Shot gameplay, really. And it adds a campaign layer, and that's what we're showcasing now. So two armies have just met, met on the campaign map, and uh, we're going into a battle now that is generated from that. So we got a fair and open battle. Different types of battles can occur, actually. Sometimes you catch part of the army off guard, so you have to... Uh, to kill them all, or to, to rout the enemy army before the reinforcements arrive. Uh, sometimes you'll fight aggressive battles, sometimes you'll fight defensive battles. And um, again, local troops, depending on the lo uh, loyalty of the region, can join in uh, and tip the balance of power if it's, uh, if it's close. Here in this case we have uh, an open battle. So we're going into deployment mode first. And let's have a look at our army. So we got a fairly big army with lots of nice uh, pike and shot units. We got some of the reserve pike and shot units, which are not so strong. We got some uh, clubmen, which are also not so strong. Uh, we have some medium guns, I think. Medium, yes, they're medium guns. And we have the enemy coming from over here. So we got trees to our uh, to our left flank. Uh, we got a slightly more open terrain to our right. Some patches of rough ground, but generally decent cavalry territory. So I think that would be the, the we're going to try and focus our cavalry on our right flank and get a line in our center slowly creeping up toward the enemy and perhaps have some skirmishers emerging from the trees over here. So that sounds like a decent enough plan. Uh, again guys if you have any questions on the game uh, please let me know in the chat I'll try and answer them. Um, or any questions in general really uh, we'll, do, uh, we'll do our best. Uh, so let's position our troops. We're going to actually unlimber our medium guns. They have a fairly good range, so if they got a nice shot uh, at the enemy, uh, that might be well worth it. And we're going to position our cavalry on the right. I like to keep some uh, some gaps between my cavalry so they have more space to maneuver um, and to make it easier to outflank some enemy once they are engaged. And uh, we're gonna position. No, we're gonna move them all to the right. I want to just imbalance the enemy basically. Parliamentary horse. We're just gonna keep our command shot into the uh, move them into the trees we could send our clubman with it perhaps to try and flank the enemy armor if they have it they're not overly useful otherwise anyway as cannon father I suppose so I think we got a fairly imbalanced setup I think that's fine for now though um, it should be a nice experiment to see let's disable this here and let's go into the battle uh, so yes, it is indeed a turn-based tactical game as well. So you got uh, battles play out in turn-based um, with uh, fairly believable uh, gameplay rules and a very challenging AI. Uh, this is one of the things. Uh, when you just start the game, you probably want to turn down the difficulty level a notch because um, it is an extremely challenging game. Good fun though. And of course, these tactical battles can also be played online using our PBAM++ system. So it's a server-based um PBM system which makes it uh, so that you don't have to be online at the exact same time in order to play together uh, so that's very nice um, when will it be released uh, I think it was on the 13th uh, that we're gonna see a release for this one uh, let me 
check that very quickly over here. Um, so yeah, in a couple of weeks time it will be released and it will be released available on Steam as well. Um, so, but if you buy from us you'll also uh, get a Steam key uh, yourself. And um, there will be a discount for everyone who uh, has the previous version of Pike and Shot. Um, and again, this, con this game uh, is standalone, but it comes with all the content that was previously available in Pike and Shot. So it's, uh, it's a pretty huge game by itself already, with uh, a lot of uh, uh, historical scenarios set up. So some campaigns we're doing right now. Uh, there's a skirmish mode that lets you generate your own battles, and even the mode I uh, showcased briefly before, where you can set up your own campaigns. So having done that, we can see the enemy over here, and they got tons of pike and shot units, probably more than we have. Um, they have some cavalry over here on the flanks. Uh, we uh, out get more cavalry on our on our right um, because they went for a more balanced setup. But I don't think their cavalry will be overly effective on this flank, so that should be to our advantage. Uh, still, though, I'm going to try and use my artillery to target some of their cavalry. So there we go, took some casualties there, uh, 176, as you can see to the bottom right of the screen you can see uh, the information on the uh, unit I'm hovering on, the different stats they have. And I'm going to set my clubman into the woods. I think, should I creep up yet with my, with my units? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold the line a bit more. So um, the campaign, uh, we're going to talk a bit more over that. We have covered the battles in some previous streams. So if you want to know more about that, I will be explaining some of the basics here. But for more information, you can refer to previous Twitches. Um, but of course, if you have specific questions, I'll try and answer them anyway. But in the campaign, so you got um, eight turns per year. Every year you get your taxes and you can use your taxes to recruit uh, new troops. Um, uh, you can make, you can combine forces into huge stacks, but of course there is the supply issue as every region has a maximum amount of uh, troops it can support or of supply points it can support. Basically, some troops require more points than others. Um, so making uh, killer stacks is not the best way. Um, regions are captured by actually taking out the strong points in them, which means that just being on a region on an enemy region isn't enough to capture it. You have to stay there some time until the local like garrison commander surrenders. Um, and during the siege, you actually suffer casualties through general attrition, war wariness, um, units losing uh, losing chances, and also sieging is impossible throughout winter. So if you haven't captured a city before winter, your troops will actually. Uh, um, cancel the siege and uh, set into winter quarters. Which is another uh, thing you have to actually take into account proper campaigning season basically. So it's a very nice touch and something that adds actually quite a bit of strategy without overcomplicating the game. So I think that's really the best thing um, uh, Byzantine Games did here is find a great um, a great balance between um, overall uh, complexity of the game while still making it very much in service to the battles. The battles are still where Pike and Shot shines. As you can see, battle takes place in different phases. Um, the phases are more important uh, as we get later into the game, as there are no melee phases, no routes, etc. yet. Uh, but it will be soon. The enemy is um, taking a bit of a they don't seem overly confident to attack, so I'm going to slowly creep up so that when my cavalry meets them, I have infantry units close by to make sure they cannot turn their full force upon my cavalry and take them out first. As you can see, these pike and shot units are relatively slow, but that's fine. Let's see, we got some Dragoons over here, and Dragoons are just very rapid infantry because they don't fire from their horses, they actually dismount, as you can see the horses are behind them, they dismount and fire uh, from ground. 
and we can try and charge them. And here you can see your first melee, uh, how it works actually. So you right click the enemy and you can see the charge impact. Um, so there's a 34% chance we win, a 64% uh, chance of a draw, and a 2% chance of lose. That doesn't mean that the enemy will be routed immediately if we win, it just means that we won a local engagement. Um, and after that we will be locked into melee until one of the units break off. And that's one of the things the game does extremely well, is have this... Um, Actually, sometimes you don't have full control of your units. When they're locked in melee, you cannot control them. They are locked in battle. It was very hard historically for a commander to disengage troops that were in melee. Um, at the same time, sometimes your troops will be following routed enemy units, and it's very hard to uh, to keep control of them. In that case, they might just route the enemy, follow the enemy all the way to the end of the screen, and might actually follow them off map, um, which happened historically a lot. Well. Not literally off map historically, obviously, but away from the battlefield. So we're going to move up our cavalry. And we got a fairly large cavalry force uh, coming forward, so now we have to respond in this turn or the next and reorganize. Um, they're not doing all that great, our own. Uh, And we're going to annoy them a little bit over here. So using our commanded shot, um, a small group of uh, riflemen or muskets only uh, to harass the enemy and hopefully lure them into the forest. Um, yes, definitely. There is um, opportunity fire in there. So if units, uh, if I walk into the line of fire of one of the units, um, it will have a response shot uh, during my turn even. So if I walk into the enemy line of fire, they might fire at me immediately and I will take casualties before I can actually fire at them. So indeed, the enemy starts moving now. Here you can see the opportunity fire with uh, my troops firing at the enemy. Ouch! And the enemy cavalry is hitting my units hard already. That is not good at all. I got fragmented initially, which means my unit is very close to breaking. And there we go. So we need to bring in our own heavy, heavy cavalry here. So we're bringing them up quickly. And we're going to use the rest to start firing on the enemy. As you can see, there are eight facing, eight directions a unit can face. And depending on that, they have a full, uh, zero full or half uh, firing arc. In this case, we have a full arc of fire. We're straight in half front of the enemy, so we fire with full effectiveness. So this is actually very unfortunate that in one in one turn a unit is routed. So here we go on that, and we're going to stop creeping forward. I think. Yeah, I like this position actually. I'm gonna hide our command shot into the forest. So we're supported by clubmen, and hopefully the clubmen will actually be able to do something against cavalry um, into forest because cavalry suffers obviously a much bigger penalty in the forest than an infantry does. For it's very hard to maneuver horses um, in a densely uh, in a dense forest. So having done that, we're going to hit and turn again. So all of the results of this battle will be carried over into the campaign. So who wins, who loses, but also the individual casualties. Um, so even if you're losing a battle, um, whereas in a skirmish mode, it might feel like a pointless attempt to try and hit the enemy still as hard as possible. Here you have very much a reason to give the, the best fight you can anyway, because it might still be helpful in winning the the entire campaign or weakening the unit the enemy army enough for the next battle when you can bring in fresh reinforcements
Ouch. I really underestimated that cavalry. Um, how is unit leadership implemented? Well, there's there are no generals on the map, um, but there are, uh, depending on the type of unit, they have a different organization or a different um, discipline, if you will. So better trained troops have higher discipline. They will be less likely to be uh, disordered or routed or um, fatigued in general. I probably shouldn't have rushed into melee so quickly. My cavalry, I really felt it was more powerful than it actually was. Uh, I should have tried and harassed them more with... Uh... With some salvos before I would rush in. So that's actually uh, the bat move on my part, really. Um, yes, uh, routed units can get back into battle, they uh, might rally, um, unless they get dispersed, if they get chased a lot they might disperse, or if they're routing for a very long time, um, so they they won't be, uh, there's a fairly small chance it happens indeed, but it doesn't ha happen every time. Uh, even units that fled from the field might return to the field at some point, but you can never be certain, so you should never depend on it, if you will. We can see some uh, shots going back and forth over here, putting some pressure on the center because I don't want too many of these units supporting and really slaughtering my cavalry any further. Here it seems like the horse has turned around, not eager to engage me, so I'm going to stand right behind them and start firing. Um, I feel fairly safe. Horses cannot charge backwards, if you will, so they have to turn before that, so at least one more turn before they... Uh, engage me. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, it also depends on the quality of the troops, uh, the likelihood of them rallying. So we got more melees going on, and I'm actually losing them uh, a lot. Uh, Although this turn seems to be okay-ish for now. We got a lot of salvos going back and forth here. Uh, definitely. Uh, one of the cool things also is the residual shooting phase, which I'm very happy with. So every unit that hasn't fired but has a target during a turn will still get its shot out. Um, so even if there wasn't an opportunity fire uh, per se, but there's still an enemy within range of a unit, it will fire. As we can see over here. Ouch, another unit disrupted. And let's see what would be the best. I'm trying to position to the enemy flanks and try and outflank these guys the next turn. That would free up some horses to help engage over here. Here you can see I would like to use these horses actually to attack um, these cavaliers in the flank. But because they are supported by another unit behind them, 
uh, my cavalry would refuse to turn their flank uh, to the enemy. So I, if I have to engage someone, I have to engage these guys, which obviously I don't want to do because I would probably lose a head-on engagement. So I'm just going to fire on them. These guys have suffered some casualties already. That's nice. And we can see the enemy using the opportunity fire to respond to my salvos with those of their own. It is definitely fun when you have units chasing broken units and the, the battle can turn into a complete mess very quickly if you don't watch out. Um, and that can really change actually, change the course of a battle if you're very unlucky. Okay, so let's hit the end turn again and see what the enemy is up for. And the numbers you see above are the casualties. Um, so we're, we're losing some battles over here, but one of the enemy is uh, fragmented, so they should be routing fairly soon. And we actually disrupted one of the uh, enemy formations, so we're gonna try and charge them next turn to make the most of that advantage. I wouldn't know of any other games about the English Civil War, to be honest. <laughs> Perhaps someone in the chat can help out there. At least no recent ones. Ouch, our horse got fragmented. The enemy horse is breaking, which is very good, and we can see our own horse is trying to chase it. So we're attacking the enemy in the flank here, and by the flank attack they were already disrupted, which gave them a negative uh, modifier on their roll, and thus I won the combat and actually managed to fragment the enemy formation. So there's now a fairly good chance that we'll be able to rout uh, their horse unit before our cavaliers are, uh, are, are routed. This guy I have, I have a little hope for. So back over here, and I could now charge it, and there's a fairly good chance it would actually win the roll. So I'm going to charge him. And it breaks immediately. That's very good. But you can see my unit actually follows the unit all the way into the enemy formation, exposing its flanks. Um, so I have to now press with my other units as well in order to protect it as best I can. Very nice. So 
I'm trying to use my clubman soon to flank the enemy. Hopefully make some use of these overall useless troops. Uh, there is actually also the option of uh, re retreating from the battle, so if I think I'm going to lose, I might retreat. And I will suffer some casualties during the retreat, uh, depending on how good or bad you are doing. But it might still be better than actually continuing the, the slaughter. So I got units breaking off. On both sides, luckily. And they're charging us in the flanks now because our... Well, we are charging the enemy in the flanks. Oh, gosh. It's a whole mess over here. And here we can see our own unit got charged in the flank because it followed the enemy so carelessly. So we did very well in routing the unit over here, but because our unit followed them directly, uh, pursued the enemy, and this is a major error on my part over here, I turned my flag towards the enemy. No rallying, unfortunately. And the units are routing off the map over there. And let's see what we can do still here. Ah, unfortunate. Keep harassing the enemy. And I fear that's all we can do this turn. These guys are still chasing the enemy. Again, turning their backs um, toward enemy formation that are still capable. And like uh, ButnothBot is saying in the chat, um, Pike and Shot battles can get very messy, but very much in a good way. So they keep very dynamic, even though you got like big, huge, slow formations, which is uh, quite unique. Ah, oh, the enemy units got rallied. That's unfortunate. No! More rallies. The enemy... Ah, they break immediately. Thank you, pursuing troops. Still though, I'm not happy that they got two rallies in one turn.
And our units are dispersed, so no chance of these guys come, ever coming back. Oh dear. Two more units are breaking. Um, so what I'm going to do at this point, um, I see the battle is, is losing quickly. Um, we're about to, to break pretty much. This guy is very bloodied. And in order also to give you, of course, a bit more uh, a show of the campaign map, what we're going to do is we're going to retreat from this battle. There we go. We're going to hit proceed. Oh yes, we suffered the defeat. And we suffered... Uh, Quite a bit of losses, actually. Although compared to the enemy, it's okay-ish, uh, except that we lost our guns in the in the. And we're getting pushed back into our own territory. So there we're back in the campaign map, and the losses are carried over. So having done that, we're going to hit and turn and see what the enemy is up to. Yeah, and it was actually captured a province. And we got into a new year, early spring, 1643. We got some treachery, so we can raise some troops now. Um, so I can raise troops in all friendly territories. Um, in this case, this might be an interesting territory to raise troops, to create a bigger army here, or to resupply this army over here. So we're going to hit raise new army. And this is what I can choose. Some of them come standard with an army, so you always get a couple of pike and shot troops. In this case, some parliamentarian horse as well. And you're going to add to that some medium guns and some more pike and shot units. They really form the backbone of your army. Uh, ideally, I'd like to have... We can do add a command and shot in there. Now here we can see the limit of how many troops we can recruit in this specific province. Uh, we can get some uh, poorly trained pike and shot in there to support it. And I'd like to have um, some Dragoons to arrest the enemy and some heavy cavalry as well. And some Pike and Shot, more Pike and Shot troops. Some light guns. Uh, we're going to. don't. Perhaps not the light guns, perhaps an extra Pike and Shot unit. And we're going to combine these armies into one. And now I feel very strong again. Oh, we don't have the... Of course, newly trained units cannot move uh, this turn, unfortunately. I have to wait until next turn. Still got some money in the treasury. Um, so it might be worth to raise another force over here. The third force. The enemy certainly has a lot of troops. So let's raise a new army here. There's a good supply limit. Uh, there's some available manpower. Let's go for uh, infantry. Um, during sieges, uh, meaning that as long as you're in an enemy province uh, you haven't captured yet, infantry is a lot more effective and artillery is a lot more effective. Well, medium artillery and heavy artillery, that is not so much light artillery uh, than cavalry. So you can actually create, uh, design specific siege armies, if you will, um, that will you use to uh, subdue uh, territory where you chased away the enemy troops. So there is a lot in there, but it's all fairly easy to get into, fairly easy to understand, and it all makes a lot of sense. Um, and the interface is easy enough to use uh, to quickly get into it. Um, so you got a small, nice little small army over here. And here, we, so we managed to capture this province. Uh, we're going to push them into Wills. But can we... Ah, our unit doesn't have any action points anymore, of course. And turn. Uh, and let's see. The enemy hasn't moved. It's afraid to attack me, which is a good thing. So I'm going to move into wheels. And they're actually offering battle. Uh, so we have a slight advantage. And we should be able to win. But they have some locals uh, joining their cause. 
So let's hit start battle again. This is considered a major battle, so we cannot auto resolve it. And here you can see another battle. And this is again an open battle, but like I said before, there can be different types. There can be battles where you're waiting for reinforcements or where the enemy is waiting for reinforcements. Um, there can be battle where one unit is dug in, has like defenses ready, and the enemy has to attack. Um, or the other way around. In this case, we got open battles, which gives us plenty of flexibility. So I'm going to deploy my artillery here. Uh, we can see this is a sizable battle indeed. Um, they can become even bigger, especially in the skirmish mode. You can make battles pretty much as big as you want. Um, or you can have very small skirmishes. It all depends on, on what you like and how you like to play. So I'm pretty happy with the standard setup, to be honest. It's fairly balanced. We get some cavalry on both sides, some cavalry in reserve, some dragoons deployed to the head of our formation to harass the enemy. We got a very open map in this case. And uh, again, you can have all kinds of maps. You can have sort of a lot of forest. forest. Um, you can have maps with, uh, uh, with rivers uh, or, or lakes, mountains, etc., or very much hills, mostly. Uh, exactly, like Alexis says, the victory condition is with one side has one side has three times the force of power of the other. So you don't have to chase them and conquer every province if you don't want to. Um, just to be sufficiently stronger um, is generally enough. So here you can see a large enemy body of troops. Um, they have uh, light guns. We have medium guns, so we should. Uh, overpower them when it comes to that. So we're going to target some specific regiments and do uh, some major damage there. I see if the enemy is willing to come to us or we have to come to them. Perhaps we can try and use our dragoons to uh, hit some of the light guns. Oop, catching a lot more casualties than I'd anticipated. Whereas our artillery doesn't hit as hard, unfortunately. Then let's try harassing them a bit more with some uh, with some horse units. Uh, yes, uh, they're definitely different battles with different, like sometimes you have fortifications, um, sometimes you don't. Uh, sometimes you're waiting for reinforcements uh, because they cut part of your army off guard uh, or the other way around. Um, so actually the longer it takes you to beat them, the more enemy is pouring in, which is a very nice dynamic. It really has a sense of pressure to the to the game. So I'm going to just gonna take control of this hill a bit. And keep our reserve pike and shot in reserve. Um, yes, generally catching fire is a morale decrease, um, or like a um, discipline decrease, I should say, probably, um, as well as um, seeing friends route. Having friends route next to you um, will also decrease morale. Of course, there is, um, in the campaign battle, there's like the poor supply, or if you've been besieging the army for a long time, um, you won't do as well as uh, either. And losing battles also doesn't help your troops. So I'm actually going to retreat my Dragoons. Um, they were very brave, but they suffered many casualties already. Um, they got some very good hits, hits out there. I'm not happy with that. It was a bit of a risky move anyway. I was hoping to make them actually uh, change formation or move up. 
but there you are, uh, still steady as ever. Perhaps they will take the bait and f follow me now, thinking it's a route. There we go, moving up our cavalry. Keeping moving toward the flanks. So again, everything you see here uh, is not the final product, although it's very close to final, to be honest. We feel very confident about, about this game, definitely. Uh, but there might be minor changes uh, leading up to release. Uh, We got out of range of one of their batteries, the other one's still firing, but very little casualties. Unfortunately, our cannons aren't inflicting the casualty I was hoping for either. And the uh, enemy army hasn't responded yet, they feel fairly confident in their positioning. Another thing that could actually retreat morale is ordering your troops to fall back, basically to step back uh, without changing uh, formation. A tactical retreat could potentially uh, end up in a rout, especially if the enemy is close by. Move into range. There we go. Generally, you want to avoid like these uh, rough grounds, but I feel like I'm not going to be fighting the enemy from here, so it's fine to move into it for now. And we're going to have you f retreat further. Of course, we're going to have artillery continue to shoot at the enemy, but for very little effect. And the enemy artillery is actually moving forward. So it's looked like we've uh, awakened our troops by threatening enough uh, with our cavalry on the flanks. So let them come to us then. Very unfortunate. And we're going to have you guys uh, retreat further, going safely behind our troops sooner rather than later. I'm going to turn toward the enemy over here. And again, we're doing uh, the English Civil War campaign now, so there's the, uh, the Gustavus Adolphus campaign, so the Swedes during the Thirty Years' War, you can play from both sides, or the uh, one of the conflicts in the Balkan, um, the Ottomans uh, fighting there, so you got some uh, Genesaries, etc., all these uh, awesome Ottoman troops fighting on that end. Um, and with the... Uh, Sandbox campaign, as so I'm calling it conveniently for now, or the Pike and Shot campaign, as it's called in the menu. You can actually choose the army list you want to play with yourself, uh, different times, different armies. So you could play the the English um, against the Ottomans, for example, or uh, the Russians against the Germans. Pretty much anything uh, you want. I 
I got the enemy pushing forward slowly. Uh, yes, the campaign map differs slightly every time you play the uh, user defined campaign. That's correct. We're going to continue to pound away at the enemy, but continue not to do a whole lot of damage. But they actually disrupted one of my units with their salvo. These guys are just lined up waiting to meet the enemy cavalry. And we're now in range of their light guns, so we have to decide if we want to push forward or, or stand their ground. If the light guns get as, uh, as good hits out as they got previously, then I might be in for a problem. Uh, yes, it could very well become a staring contest until that point where, again, uh, units start to route, chases happen, and then from a very organized battle, very quickly, it can uh, <laughs> create one big mess, to be honest. And usually, the army which better contains order uh, is the winning army. And let's see. Need to create some space here for these guys to route to, so these guys can shoot again. And they got cavaliers coming about, um, so they might charge me actually in the next turn, which is. I still make a fairly good chance. So let's get rid of these guys. Ouch. Um, artillery can be extremely useful, but um, it's not very reliable generally. Um, so it's... Um, it's a bit tricky, really. But overall, you definitely want to have some artillery uh, in your force. Ouch, fragmented immediately. That's not good at all. Under residual shooting phase, so any unit that hasn't fired yet gets his chance now. Rally, some luck. Of 
for one of the other unit breaks and you see this guy got fragmented. Seeing your allies route is not a good thing. I am focusing fire. I'm spreading out my troops so I might be able in, to be in better position for flanking maneuvers later. And let's see over here then. That's better. So I'm trying to focus fire as, on, on uh, specific troops as much as possible. There we go. Still have these guys, I have to think what to do with these lads. Probably gonna move them around the flank later. Sometimes we don't have it here, but sometimes infantry units actually come with attached light uh, artillery, so that makes for a deadly combination in prolonged fire. Um, ah, good. So these guys break. The enemy actually managed to evade them, the enemy... And we got my fragmented unit over here. So hopefully we can route them pretty soon. Seems like the Royalists definitely have the better cavalry. And they are auto breaking, and auto breaking means that they suffered, uh, I think, over 50% casualties, which makes them to uh, break regardless of their morale. This is again very unfortunate. So our unit was uh, bro broken after the second turn and that disrupted the unit next to it which got immediately attacked, um, fragmenting them immediately. We managed to fire enough on the enemy to fragment it and finish it with a charge from our uh, lobsters, as they're called, and route them. Unfortunately, we are pursuing them while we could really use these guys to, uh, to actually keep on fighting over here, because I don't think our horses will last long without it. Let's try and route, try and route these guys over here, then. And they're breaking. Disrupting the uh, enemy in the process, which is very good. So 
So we're getting some decent damage over here. I'm feeling somewhat more confident on this end. And let's see what we can do from here because we're not doing all that well. You get two fragmented units, really. Uh, let's try and move to the behind enemy lines where you're relatively safe and try if we can engage their light guns. These guys are still uh, chasing the enemy, so I have no control over them. These guys can break any moment, basically, and same for these horses. So that's not good at all. And even on the side where I felt more confident, um, I'm about to suffer uh, major casualties. Oh, and their guns are actually disrupting our units now. And we just keep on chasing, but again, it's unfortunate. Very good. So the enemy pike and shot line isn't gonna hold very long. They also disperse their units trying to support the cavalry, which wasn't really needed. Um, they're trying to bring them in as reinforcements now, but hopefully I will be able to grab them anyway. Here we're getting charged from the flanks, which disrupts us. Then we lose the roll, we get immediately fragmented. So these guys are done for because, again, they chased foolishly uh, the enemy. Uh, we break out more units. Ah, we got a rally. Isn't that nice? And unfortunately, just we had position when we had position our guys to the enemy flank. Let's see. Okay. So even the unit that just rallied is uh, done for. Let's hit them in the flank though. Let's see what we can do over here, where things are going slightly better. Targeting the reserve guys, but for no kills, unfortunately. And we charge the uh, enemy cannons with our cavalry, in causing an instant rout to them. Um, so they're dispersed immediately. Cavalry or artillery uh, cannot rout uh, the heavy guns. They're not easy to uh, get away when the enemy is pursuing. So I need to get these guys to safety, really. So 
focusing fire again, significantly reducing their numbers. And I think we're going to end turn. And uh, <clears throat> I think we're off to this. We're going to do our final turn for now. Again, this was a game generated by the uh, Sandbox campaign. I showed you quickly how it's done. There are four campaigns out there, and they generate these kind of battles. And the carryover will be uh, there will be casualties carried over, morale carries over, um, as well as experience of units. And um, so you have to raise your troops, uh, stay within the supply limits, obviously. And uh, with that. Uh, try and outstrengthen your enemy, be it in the English Civil War, in the War of Gustavus Adolphus, or in the Balkan War. So uh, it's a lot of uh, replayability, a lot of flexibility, and it adds context between these randomly generated battles. Um, so there's quite almost like an endless amount of replayability, really. And that's the main feature of Pike and Shot campaigns, which again is the new series in the Pike and Shot series. So if you already have Pike and Shot, there will be a discount once it's available. Um, if you uh, don't have Pike and Shot yet, if you jump in with this title, you will get the full uh, content that was already available in the previous Pike and Shots as well. So with tons of historical battles out there from all kinds of different campaigns. Um, so if you ever wanted to play the Dutch Revolt, for example, um, you can do it now. As well as a skirmish generator, so you can set up your own battles. There's a battle editor even, so you can set up your own historical battles and download community maps very quickly in-game. So that's extremely convenient as well. And again, you got these campaign system now as well, where you can either play one of the historical campaigns or play uh, generate your own campaign really with the army list you like to try and the army list you like to play. So lots of freedom, lots of replayability, all uh, further strengthening an already great gaming system that is Pike and Shot. So let's see what happened here. Our right flank is crumbled. Um, in the center we seem to be doing fairly well to be honest. Uh, unfortunately we're chasing the enemy again which is uh, not really good. It's actually about to be cut off. And um, yeah, let's finish this final turn so I can route these bastards. There we go. And uh, perhaps even these guys. There we go. That's a nice way of doing it, really. And um, so that's it for now. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uh, Pike and Shot campaigns will be available uh, very soon, uh, in about a couple of weeks' time, really, uh, hit the uh, banner below to get more information on Pike and Shot. Take you right through the product page. Uh, yes, that's correct. I am from the Netherlands, and uh, it will be available on Steam as well. If you will buy uh, from our own site, um, you will get a Steam key as well, so you get both of them. And there will be a discount for everyone who already owns Pike and Shot. Uh, so that's all for now. Thanks again for watching. We'll be back next week with a different game. Um, and we hope to see you again next time. And please send me any feedback uh, regarding the stream you have or anything you'd like to see in the future. Alright, thanks everyone. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.